I've learned that coincidences are not coincidences. They're actually God incidences. I was just passed a letter now from one of the people who just gave testimony that the above person applied for this position. They've given your name as a referee. We'll be grateful if you complete the details in the attached envelope and blah, 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 blah. Please, let's give God glory for this job. Let's give God the glory, the glory. Let's ask for promotion for this individual in the name of Jesus. In case you are wondering who I, what her name is, her name is Sarah. <laughs> Lord, give Sarah a house. Amen. Before January 1st. Amen. In the next few minutes. Amen. I bring us a word clearly, and I want us to be very sensitive, and I want us to listen. There's word of knowledge, there's word of wisdom. The word of God will come so much in its simplicity. And by this time, in 2016, you will be bold to say that my experience in 2016 is that no more garbage no more baggage Amen. in my life. Amen. That will be your testimony. Amen. There are two individuals in the Bible, and the Bible tells us that this, the things written in the Bible are written for our examples. <coughs> the Bible tells me that there's nothing new under heaven. There is absolutely nothing you're going through now that is actually new to God that has not happened before. And because it's not new to God, it's happened before, God has always sorted people out. God has always fixed situations and circumstances that people go through. Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. Is the beginning and the ending. Now let me tell you, before you get into 2016, the Lord is already there. Amen. He's gone ahead of you. Amen. He knows what you should do every single day, every single week, every single month of next year. And you won't miss it. Let me prophesy to you before I bring this word. 2016 will be your best year ever. Amen. I want to talk to us about no more garbage no more baggage. Now, there are two individuals we will use as a case study. And then, as the word will be coming, anything that applies to you, just know that God is addressing it and God has delivered you from it. Just know that. That's why it's been addressed specifically tonight. Now, there was a man called Moses in the Bible. We've all heard about the man Moses. He led the children of Israel. He led them out of captivity into a land where God has promised them. But there, are some, there were some issues with this man called Moses. When you look at Moses' story, uh, when we look at Exodus chapter 2, the whole of Exodus chapter 2 shows us Moses when he was born, when he was an infant, as he grew up, and as he went into exile. And then we see later in, you know, later chapters of Exodus chapter, uh, in the book of Exodus, how he spent 40 days and 40 nights talking face to face with God on a mountain top, receiving from God. I mean, the Bible describes Moses as the meekest man on the face of the earth. He spoke to God face to face. And then he speaks to God for 40 days, 40 nights. He receives instructions from God for the people of God. And he comes down from talking to God, gets to the foot of the mountain, and begins to hear music in the camp of the children of Israel that he left behind to receive instructions 
from God on their behalf. The children of Israel, because of delay, because they felt he took too long on the mountain, they decided that they couldn't wait for Moses anymore. And then they decided to choose another God that they want to serve. Let me tell us something about delay. If you're going through any delay, this is a word of knowledge. Don't give up. God will soon settle you. Amen. Let me tell us, it is at the point at which God is about to come through that we usually give up. So don't give up. Whatever was delayed this year, don't give up. Because you are at the verge of a breakthrough, of a turnaround. They went, they made a molten calf, and they said, this is the God that delivered them. Now, Moses saw what they did, and the Bible says that Moses' anger burned so hot, so hot. And the next thing Moses did was the two tablets on which God wrote instructions known as the Ten Commandments. Moses smashed it to the ground. He smashed it, and then he addressed the children of Israel angrily. Now, I think it was on the 10th day of our retreat. You know, today's the 12th day and the final day of the 12 days retreat we've been having in this church since the 20th of December. We've been waiting on the Lord receiving prophetically every single day for the next 12 months of 2016. That's why I know that your, your victory is certain in 2016. If you were part of this retreat, and God, God has simply given you a blueprint for next year. Now, I came, knelt down there, and God began to speak to me. To tell us that like Moses, we've been on the mountain. But the reality is that after the retreat, after receiving from God, we're going to start facing real life. From January. And the things he has spoken to us, do not forget. And like Moses, don't smash everything. Don't destroy. Don't use your hands to destroy the instructions God has given us. And then God began to speak to me about a message that he gave me, I think it was around 2006, thereabout, at a retreat like this. And it was the last day of the retreat also. And God was showing me some things that we've had so much about love, love, love. Suddenly, this retreat, this is the 12th year of the retreat, and God has emphasized to us so much about love. And God told me, preach this message in love, because when you preached it in 2006, you preached it in anger. So I bring us no more garbages, or rather no more garbage. My first son cor corrected me. It's always correct in my English. I was there when he was born. <laughs> but it's okay. <laughs> no more garbage. Please tell somebody no more garbage. No more baggage. No more baggage. No more. Now, what do we mean by a garbage? Let's start with garbage. And I will give us a metaphorical analogy. Now, a garbage, right? is defined as rubbish or waste. Worthless, meaningless material or ideas, junk, scrap, something discarded, trash, wanted data, if you want to look at it from uh, the language of computer. Garbage in, garbage out. Now, the thing about garbage is that you have a, either a garbage bin or a garbage bag. Now, because it's a garbage bin or bag, naturally what happens? You dump, you don't ask for the consent of this bag before you throw anything inside it. Is that true? Do you beg, please, can I? Naturally, you just throw rubbish inside it. And 
the metaphor here is that that's the way the life of some of us have been. And usually, without our consent, people have dumped rubbish on us. Especially when we were born, or when we were growing up, when we had no power to resist, when we were defenseless as a baby. Growing up, you've been called names, you've been cursed, People have dropped all their junk and all their anger thrown upon you. Now, look at Moses. Moses was born at a time when there was a very mad king who was going to kill every male child. You know the story. So they hid him, but they couldn't hide him for long. They threw him on the river. Pharaoh's daughter's maid found him. They took him, and Moses became an adopted child in the palace of Pharaoh. Now, let me say this. There is something about children or people who are adopted. There is this deep anger, especially when they find out one day that the people they've been calling daddy, mommy, are not their real parents. You might be here tonight. God is healing you. Amen. Moses was given a name that naturally his parents would not have called him. Moses was a foreign name, was an Egyptian name, which means drawn from the river, rescued. So all his life, he was bearing a name that naturally he shouldn't bear if he grew up in his own parents' house. There's another character in the Bible which we will look at. His name, Jabez. Jabez was born. And the Bible records it in the book of Chronicles that because the mother bore him in pain, the mother decided to give him a name, Jabez. Why? Because she bore him in pain. And what's the meaning of Jabez? It means sorrow. So we see these two individuals who were given and dumped with garbage right from when they were born. Look at the story of Moses. And look at the end of Moses. Moses, by the time he was an old man, one thing prevented him from entering the promised land. His anger. Where did his anger come from? I could trace it to when he was born. Called out. Drawn from the river. Grew up. He bore a name. That wasn't his own. And then he had the first garbage of his life dumped upon him. Jabez, did he choose to be born? Did he apply to heaven and say, please send me to earth? Did he? The day of labor, the day of delivery came. Push, push. Push! And it was painful. And it came out. And the mother dumped the first garbage on him. Sorrow. He carried this garbage all his life. Everywhere he went. Jabez. I'm pretty sure people didn't want to be his friends. Because how will you call him? Sorrow, come here. Come here. Sorrow, let's fellowship. All his life, he carried that garbage. Moses, all his life, also carried that garbage. Where does Moses' anger come from? I could trace it to when he was born. Moses, in our modern day parlance, will be somebody that will have 
been diagnosed with bipolar. Let me let me let me show you. Let's 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 trace Moses' garbage. Okay? We've seen the first garbage in his life. Right? He was called a name, a foreign name, and then we began to see the manifestation. Please go to Exodus chapter 2, verse 11. The first garbage began to manifest in Exodus chapter 2 from verse 11. It came to pass those days, Moses was grown. He went out to his brethren. This time, remember, he grew up in Pharaoh's palace. So he went out one day to his own brethren. He looked at their burdens. He saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, one of his brethren. By this time, Moses had a dual personality. He was meant to be a prince. But something in him told him, he's a Jew. Confusion. Double-mindedness, deep-seated anger. It's a footballer I don't want to mention. We discussed him the other day. <laughs> that was off record. Do you know the anger? Even though you've got a red passport, but when push comes to push, or whatever they call it, they remind you of where you came from. Anger. You are neither here nor there. The garbage manifested that day. He saw an Egyptian beaten. Can you imagine the kind of anger he must have been brewing all his life? Watching the Egyptians oppressing the Jews. He was meant to be an Egyptian, but he was not an Egyptian. So he was here, he was there. But he watched his brethren abused daily. Imagine the anger that will have been pent up inside him. The garbage manifested. What did he do? He killed that Egyptian. He killed the Egyptian. And then you will think, that the Hebrew that he saved will be happy. The following day, he saw two Hebrews, his own brethren, fighting. And he only went there to make peace. What did they say to him? They said to him, verse 14, rather than them saying, yes, welcome, brother. Thank you for delivering us yesterday. Do you know what happened? They challenged him. The, he came to his own, and his own rejection. rejected him. Moses suffered rejection. Have you suffered rejection? You're not alone. God is healing you right now. On top of that, betrayal. Do you know what happened to Zippe? They went to tell Pharaoh. Pharaoh knew. And that meant death sentence. From there, Moses became a fugitive. He had to start running for his life. Imagine an angry, double-minded man now running from what he thought was home and the people he knew was his own people also rejected him. And where did he run to? Brethren, he ran to a place called Midian. Look at this prophetically. Midian means strife. Because the first thing he saw at Midian, when he went to that well, was shepherds oppressing some beautiful girls. And he stood up. He fought. Anger, garbage, began to manifest in his life. There's something about garbage, brethren. Everywhere you go, it manifests and makes you stink. Do you know something about odor? Try to hide it, try to mask it. It will seep out somewhere. Garbage. The 
people he risked his life for rejected him. And then do you know what happened to Moses later? Because he rescued that girl, they took, they took him to their father. The father welcomed him, priest of Midian, and then you know what happened? He began to acquire the first baggage. The man gave him his daughter, called Zipporah. to marry. He still had his garbage of anger. He married Zipporah. Do you think naturally he will have married Zipporah? Zipporah was a Midianite. He was an Israelite, a Jew. It's called cross-cultural marriage. Do you know one of the challenges of cross-cultural marriages? Understanding. You have different views. You have different gods. You have different level of spirituality. Cross-cultural marriage, cross-church marriage. My church believes in speaking in tongues. The damsel you married, their church speak no tongues. Garbage baggage. And then we begin to acquire these things. Moses acquired Zipporah. More baggage. Zipporah gave him two sons. More baggage. Moses pent up anger. Garbage. More baggage. Do you know one thing about baggage? Slowly it builds up and begins to weigh you down. Slowly he acquired two sons. But remember, Moses was restless. There was this burning issue, garbage still in his life. The anger, the rejection, being called a name that really shouldn't be yours. More baggage. I began to ask the Lord, because when you look at the life of Moses, at a point in time, do you know he became separated? From his wife, another baggage, separation. Do you know another baggage he acquired? He was going to Egypt as God commanded him to do God's work. On their way, God is, the Bible said God was going to kill Moses. And the next thing we see was the baggage, his wife, two children, Zipporah, quickly took a knife and circumcised their second son. And do you know the next thing? She called Moses, you bloody husband. Another baggage. Wife is abusing me. Cross-cultural marriage. We don't share the same spirituality in the first place. Why did I even marry her? More anger. Moses did the job God asked him to do. He had his, a brother called Aaron, a sister called Miriam. One day they criticized him. Why did you marry that woman? Another baggage. Angry. Moses. 
And then God gave him job to do again. He led so many people through the same wilderness he was for 40 years. And for those 40 years, he kept acquiring insults from the people he was meant to lead. Moses, why did you take us out to promised land? You brought us here to kill us. You are wicked. You are very wicked, Moses. His baggage began to be full. Don't forget the garbage was still there. All his life. And then he got to the peak of his ministry. And Moses blew it because of the garbage and the baggage. Let's go to Jabez. Do I need to tell you? Sorrow, sorrow everywhere, all his life. Sorrow, he turns right. Sorrow, sorrow, his own, no friends. In fact, no girl wanted to go out with Jabez. Because the first one he went to, what's your name? My name is Sorrow. I don't go out with Sorrow, sorry. Rejection. Sorrow. Jabez. Garbage. Sorrow was his garbage. Rejection. Name calling. Loneliness. Because I can guarantee you, nobody wants to be friends with sorrow. We see two characters, but brethren, that was not the end. And God begins to tell me, to tell the following people. Starting with some garbages that he's dealing with right now. You were born into a certain kind of family. You know, you have no choice over the family you will choose. A broken family, garbage. A broken home, garbage. Your father, an alcoholic, garbage. He was never there for you, garbage. Functional. One day you saw your dad growing up, beating up your mother. Garbage. Inside you, pent up anger for the male gender because you saw your father abuse your mother as a child. Garbage. Pent up inside you shaped your life and along the line or maybe your own garbage is that you were adopted or you were born with a disability you didn't grow up or you were born with a disease which you didn't choose you know if your parents are of the genotype AS, AS, there's the likelihood there might be a garbage called sickle cell. One of the children will carry. God is addressing these things. And all your life, you're living with that disability. Not because you chose, but because it was dumped on you. Garbage. The Lord is healing these things. You grow up with the wrong influence. You grow up with wrong teaching. You grow up and everybody around you felt they had a right to speak into your life because you are defenseless. As a child, you were abused sexually, emotionally, 
physically. You grew up and all you saw your parents do was fight and fight and fight. Garbage. And deep inside you, deep-seated anger. And people wonder, why are you always angry? What have I just said that's just made you snap? Garbage, brethren. <coughs> the Lord is healing, healing. You are not going into 2016 because the Lord is sending this word and the word of knowledge that is addressing your particular situation is to heal you tonight. Amen. Listen. And then, all your life, maybe you watched family members abuse each other. As a child, you were exposed to immorality without your choice. You were forced to watch pornography. Or maybe one day you actually saw the nakedness of your parents and it's made you so much detest the opposite sex. You can't have a happy relationship with people. Or maybe as a child you caught your, one of your parents in adultery. Garbage. Or you are born as an orphan. Garbage. Some of us have acquired so many baggages. But I've got good news. Whatever baggage it is, it could be a habit. Because people go into habits and addictions because of the garbage in their lives, trying to get away. You wonder why the girl is loose going from one boy to the other. It's because the father wasn't there. Garbage. And people will always sadly take advantage of people who have garbages and baggages in their life. But the good news tonight is that there was a man called Esau. He was robbed of his birthright by his own younger brother. But you know what happened? God told him, you're going to serve your younger brother, but there's a way out. Let me tell us something. This garbage, baggage, I don't need to tell us. <clears throat> All it does is to weigh us down. Wherever you go, you struggle because of your garbage, you stink. People don't want to have anything to do with you. You wonder why you lose relationships easily. You wonder why you always get into fights. God is going to uproot every garbage and baggage tonight. Jesus said, come unto me. Oh, you who labor and you're heavy laden. It says, cast all your cares upon me. And I will give you rest. God told Esau, go to Genesis chapter 10. Let me show you. And we're going to pray right now. We are going into 2016. With no garbage, with no baggage. In the name of Jesus. Jesus has given you rest. Listen. Go to Isaiah 10 27. Because garbage is like a yoke. But the Bible tells me because of the anointing. The burden will be taken away from your shoulder. And the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing. Do you know the meaning of Christ? The anointed one. I break every yoke upon your life in the name of Jesus. 
God told Esau. Genesis 27, verse 40. Please, let's stand to our feet at this point. We are taking a stand here tonight, but I need to explain what we are going to do. We are taking a stand because no garbage, no baggage is going to enter 2016 with you. We are dumping them with 2015. Listen! God told him. Please bring it up. Genesis 27 verse 40. He already had this garbage of being cheated. He was an angry man. You saw. God told him. By your sword you will believe. But you will serve your brother. But it will come to pass. Ah. When you become restless. Do you know what that means? I can't take this anymore. Enough. It's enough. Restless. When a yoke is on an animal and the animal gets restless, it throws the yoke off. It says, when you become restless, then you shall break that yoke. And that's what Jesus is doing tonight. He says, come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest it says, learn of me, for I'm meek and lowly in heart. Take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy, my burden is light. That is your story in 2016. Amen. Listen, how did Jabez break that yoke? God says we should pray this prayer. Please, are you restless? Do you want the garbage for 2016? Please answer, somebody desperate. Or do you want to be in the same position? Please bring. Jabez broke that yoke. First Chronicles chapter 4. The Bible says Jabez. One day became restless. The Bible says he was more honorable than his brothers. Because his mother named him Jabez. It says, pain, a painful birth. I bore him in great pain. But one day, one day. Please, somebody say one day. One day. When is that one day? One now, day. suddenly, suddenly, he said, oh, that you will bless me indeed. Let me tell us something about Jabez that you need to understand. If you read from Genesis, if verse 1 of that scripture, he was from the, he was a descendant of Judah. Praise. That was the tribe Jesus was going to come from. But somebody along the line dumped a garbage on him. His own blood. His own womb. Where he came out from. And changed his destiny. But one day, he became restless. restless. And the day you become restless, you break that yoke. Please lift up your voices and thank God that your situation was addressed tonight. You have entered 2016. No more garbage. No more baggage. 